that you can pay attention to is cut. You know, when uh, I think uh, in this piece of dialogue, uh, I guess it's happy that's a uh, kid or birth. Okay, but when it gets to the dialogue between uh, Howard and uh, Willie, uh, Howard calls him kid. And that's where we feel that, oh, there's something wrong you know, about their status. You know, that uh, uh, Howard, uh, and then uh, later also Bernard calls uh, Willie kid. Okay, kid can be an intimate term, but then when the youngsters call the uh, elderly kid, then there may be something wrong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, group two. Where is group two? You you had a couple already, didn't you? Just a cowboy, yeah. Well, what happened, boy? Everything go all right? <laughs> um, I had experience today. Terrific, Pop. That's so. What happened? I'm going to tell you everything from first to last. It's been a strange day. Uh, I had to wait quite a while for him and... Uh, Oliver? Yeah, Oliver, all day. As a matter of cold fact, and a lot of instances, facts, Pop, facts about my life came back to me. Who was it, Pop? Who ever said I was a salesman with Oliver? Well, you were. No, Dad. I was shipping clerk. Yeah, but you were practically. Dad, I don't know who said it first, but I was never a salesman for Bill. Oliver. What are you talking about? Let, let's hold on to the facts tonight, Pop. We, uh, we are not going to get anywhere boat line around. I was a shipping clerk. All right, now listen to me. Why don't you let me finish? I'm not interested in stories about the past or any crap of that kind because the woods are burning, boys. You understand? There's a big blaze going on all around. I was fired today. How could you be? I was fired, and I'm looking for a little good news to tell your mother, because the woman has waited, and the woman has suffered. The, the gist of it, the gist of it is that I haven't got a story left in my head, Viv, so don't give me a lecture about the facts and aspects. I'm not interested. Now, what have you got to say to me? Did you see Oliver? Jesus, Dad. You mean you didn't go up there? Sure. Sure, he went up there. I did. I saw him. How could they fire you? What kind of a welcome did he give you? He won't even let you work on the commission. I'm out. So tell me. He gave you a warm welcome? Sure, Pop. Sure. Well, it was kind of... I was wondering if he'd remember you. Imagine, man doesn't see him for 10, 12 years and gives him that kind of a welcome. Damn right. Pop, look. You know why he remembered you, don't you? Because you impressed him in those days. Let's call it quietly and then get this done to the facts, huh? Well, what happened? It's great news, Biff. Did he take you into his office? Or off, or you talk in the waiting room. Well, he can't in, see, and? What do you say? Bet you he threw his arm around you. Well, he kind of... He's a fine man, very hard man to see, you know? Oh, I know. 
Is that where you had the drinks? Yeah, I gave me the cabot of. Uh, no, no. He told him my Florida idea. Don't interrupt. How do you react to the Florida idea? Dad, will you give me the minutes to expand? I've been waiting for you to explain since I sat down here. What happened? He took you into his office and what? Well, I talk, and he listens. See, famous for the way he listens, you know. What was his answer? His answer was, "Dad, you are not letting me tell you what I want to tell you." You didn't see him, did you? I did see him. What did you insult him or something? You insulted him, didn't you? Listen, will you let me out of that? Will you just let me out of that? What the hell? Tell me what happened. I can't tell, talk to him. This is Loman. This is Loman. Tell him what happened. Shut up and leave me alone. No, no, you had to go and flunk math. What math? What are you talking about, Mrs. Loman? Mrs. Loman. Math, math, math. Take it easy, Pop. Mrs. Loman. <laughs> If you hadn't flunked, you'd been set by now. Now look, I'm gonna tell you what happened, and you are going to listen to me. Mrs. Loman. I wait. I waited six hours. What the hell are you saying? I kept sending in my name, but he wouldn't see me. So finally, he. Beef flunked math. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. Huh? Burn. Burn bone. Burman flunked him. They won't graduate him. But they have to. Ah, uh, he's gotta go to the university. Where is he? Beef, beef. No, he left. He went to Grand Central. Grand? You mean he went to Boston? Is Uncle Willie in Boston? Oh, maybe Willie can talk to the teacher. Oh, the poor, poor boy. Son and washed up with Oliver. You understand? Are you listening to me? Yeah, sure. If you hadn't flunked. Flunked? What? What are you talking about? Don't blame everything on me. I didn't flunk math. You did. What pen? That was awful dumb beef. A pen like that is worse. You took Oliver's pen. Dad, I just. Plan it to you. You stole Bill Oliver's fountain pen. I didn't exactly steal it. That is just what I have been explaining to you. He had it in his hand just then. Oliver walking walked in, so he got nervous and stuck in his in his pocket. My God, Biff! I never intended to do it, Dad. I'm not in my room. Dad, what's the matter? Dad, I will make good. I will make good. Sit down now. No, you're no good. You're no good for anything. I am, Dad. I will find something else. Now you understand. Now I don't. Now don't worry about anything. Talk to me, Dad. No, no, no. He'll strike something, Pop. No, no. Pop, listen, listen to me. I'm telling something good. Oliver talked to his partners about the Florida idea. You listening? He, he talked to his partner, and he came to me. I'm going to be all right. You hear? 
that, listen to me, he said it was just the question of the moment, a month. Then you got it? He's gonna be terrific, Pop. Then you got it, haven't you? You got it, you got it. No, no, look, Pop, I'm supposed to have a lunch with Len tomorrow. I'm just telling you this so you will know that I can still make an impression, Pop, and I will make good somewhere, but I can't, I can't go tomorrow, see? Why not? You simply... But the pen, Pop. You give it to him and tell him it was an oversight. Sure, have lunch tomorrow. I can't say that. You were doing a crossword puzzle and accidentally used his pen. Listen, kid. I took those bows years ago. Now I work in with his fountain pen. Let's clinch it. Don't you see? I can't face him like that. I will try else elsewhere. Don't you want to be anything? Pop, how can I go back? You don't want to be anything. Is that what's behind it? Don't take it away. You think it was easy walking into that office after what I would done to him? A team of horses couldn't have dragged me back to Bill Oliver. Then why'd you go? Why did I go? Why did I go? Look at you. Look at what become of you. Biff, you're going to go to that lunch tomorrow, or... I can't go. I've got an appointment. Biff, four. Are you spiting me? Don't... Don't take it away. Don't get... Uh, don't take it that way. God damn it. You rotten little louse. Are you spiting me? Someone at the door. Willie. I know, good. Can't you see what I am? Hey, you are in the restaurant. Now cut it out, both of you. Hello, girls. Sit down. Nobody did, right? Okay. You you did? Okay. Uh, sorry, I saw that uh, nobody did it. Uh, so I w uh, I cut in. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So then, um, uh, anyone from the group uh, interpreted uh, the passage for us? How about Jennifer? I guess uh, the part which was uh, hard to understand, which might be hard to understand, is um, the uh, intrusion of the operator. Because uh, I think that's the beginning of the uh, Biff's visit to Boston. And uh, it appears because um, Willie uh, again realizes uh, his role in uh, Biff's failure. Yeah, okay. Anything else, Jennifer? The passage, uh, any details from this passage? Um, the Willie's love for Billy. Mm hmm Or Biff. Uh-huh. Uh, you, you mean uh, you find some examples of Willie's love for Biff? Between their dialogues. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, let me ask uh, Ken something first. What do you feel reading the lines of this? What do you think he was doing? Um, complain. Only complaining, complaining about his father. And want to explain everything to him. About the visit to Bill Oliver. Yes. Does he tell the truth? <laughs> no. Why? Why? Di why didn't you tell the truth? And uh, because I think uh, his father won't give him a chance to give out Harvard a visit. 
uh, okay, why did the, uh, where do you find you are not given a chance to tell the truth? I mean, where yeah. did I find? Yeah, when, when or where, you know, in this passage, uh, did, uh, will it not give uh, Beth a chance to tell the truth? Web Web Weber, did you sense uh, when you uh, you when you played the role of Willie uh, that you didn't give uh, Beth a chance to tell the truth? Okay, pass the mic to Weber, please. On page what? I think I think it's on page one six nine five. One six nine five. Uh, Biff Biff says that Dad, you're not letting me uh, tell you what I want to tell you, and Willie uh, was angered and started accusing him. Uh, you didn't see him, did you? Uh, wait, one uh, ninety five, and uh, what part in ninety five? Uh, it's it's I think it's in the middle. Okay, yeah, that's where uh, Biff uh, really cannot stand it. But I think even before then, uh, I'm 94, uh, when Willie says that uh, I was fired, and then I'm looking for some good news to tell uh, my wife, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in that passage, um, I'm looking for a, a, a little good news to tell your mother because the woman has waited and the woman has suffered. This is the beginning of where we see that Willie is really expecting some good news. And then uh, Biff is cornered. You know, Biff, Biff is uh, kind of forced to say something positive. Uh, although uh, when he goes to the restu restaurant, uh, he actually wanted to tell the truth. He wanted to uh, confront Willie with all the facts. Okay, um, so this is one spot. And then I think the other spot is um, page 96. Uh, when Biff finds out, finds that uh, Willie is kind of out of his mind, okay, like um, Willie said, uh, I'm not in my room, just a little bit below the middle, and Biff frightened. Dad, what's the matter? He and Happy stand up. Okay, and Biff horrified and gets down on one knee before Willie. Dad, Dad I'll make good, I'll make good. This is another turning point that he has to admit, the, uh, uh, he has to make up the story for, uh, for Willie because Willie uh, first expects the news and then second is kind of out of his mind, irrational at this point. But um, on page 97, uh, upon the mentioning of the fountain pen, Willie again, uh, sorry, Biff again uh, remembers that, uh, you know, making up the, the story is no good because he cannot go back to uh, Bill Oliver. And then he admits again that he cannot go back to Bill Oliver. Okay, so here uh, we see the very complicated relationship between the father and the son, how the son actually cares about the father and tries to make, him feel, make the father feel good without being successful. Yeah, okay. Uh, anything else you notice, uh, Jennifer? Jennifer or um, is it Toby? At the back? No. Kobe. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Either one of you. Uh, I think um, there are some conflicts between Biff and Willie uh -huh. because um, from their dialogues, it seems that uh, Willie has a big expectations to Biff. And uh -huh. it seems like uh, Biff can fulfill his father's uh, satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So he made up the story and tried to make his father feel better. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So the conflict is in, in between uh, his need to be truthful and his love for the father. Yeah, okay. 
There are some names, uh, some nouns uh, you may not know, like Standish Arms. I think Standish Arms should be the name of the restaurant. Oh no, sorry, the hotel. Uh, Bit of uh, visits, yes, okay. Uh, Kobe? Anything else? Do you know what happened afterwards, after the two women coming? No? Okay, but uh, and then anything uh, happens here uh, in this passage? Or about the fountain pen, why is it so important? At one point, uh, Happy says, um, Biff, a pen like that is worse. It means that it's not really costly. It's something cheap. Okay, so why, uh, why do you think that uh, Biff takes away the fountain pen? He stole something, and uh, he has the habit that stolen mm -hmm. something. So in the past, he has he has. Stolen something from Oliver before. Before. Uh huh. And this is the second time. Yes. So. C can can you try to explain why he does it? Or anybody else? Can any one of you explain why people can be a uh, kleptomaniac? He, his father's education yes. told him and make him feel nervous or... Oh. In the past, he, when he stole, stole something and his father did not scold him or blame him not, not to do this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that could be one uh, one reason uh, that the father does not stop him from doing it. Uh, he only says, that, oh, the, co the coach will praise you for your initiative, you know, for your wanting to practice uh, the, ba uh, the ba uh, football or basketball, yeah, something like that. Um, I think uh, there could be another reason, uh, which is similar to uh, happy's tendencies to womanizing, and that is uh, to feel a sense of power. You know, because uh, towards the end of Act Two, uh, when he says that um, you blow me up for something good, which I'm really not, uh, uh, I I'm not really. Uh, so in other words, uh, his father make him too big, uh, and he cannot uh, uh, cope with that big image, and then he wants to uh, use something easy to feel powerful. And in the case of happy, it is uh, to uh, to get one woman after another of his bosses. And in the case of uh, Biff, it is to steal things from his bosses. Okay, so both are ways of uh, to feel powerful in a, in a possessive way. You know, sometimes we feel powerful inside, you know, if we are sure about ourselves. And for them who are not sure about themselves, they need to possess things to feel powerful, yeah, okay.